Special guest scholar there uh, just scored one. All right, guys, so we out here gonna try it a little bit today and uh, see what we can come across. Uh, it's a uh, kind of a bluebird day. Got uh, a little bit of wind. Uh, early fall. Uh, just had a little time here, and I apologize. I hadn't made any videos in a while. I've been busy with this. Uh, new retirement life that I'm living here. Uh, trying to settle down on part-time job and that kind of thing, so. Uh, and I think we've got something going now. We're gonna be able to get settled in, settled up here and get back in the fishing world and see. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, the tournament season has ended for us here. Uh, Got a few little old uh, Saturday tournaments we're going to may try to fish this fall, but uh, the bulk of it's over with. So. And we did all right. Uh, we sported our hobby a little bit, and, uh, that sort of thing. So, We have a new jig we're gonna try out today, Coosa Red Eye Jig. Uh, you can see it come out here. And uh, I'm gonna look Derek up on the uh, internet, Coosa Red Eye Jigs, and uh, makes high quality product and uh, at, a, at a good price and he can if you got some ideas on what you want, he'll work with you on colors and that kind of thing. Uh, but these jigs that Derek makes is uh, uh, he's got the best weed guard I've seen. Uh, we'll look at them here a little closer, maybe in a minute. Take it out of a fish's mouth. That'd be a plus. Grass is kind of dying off a little bit, so yeah. yeah. Closer to closer, hard cover as the year progresses here. Of course, this Coosa Red Eye jig it hits pretty hard when you skip it meaning it gets a good forward momentum when, it's, when it hits. When you're out skipping, I'll give you a little tidbit that'll help you or help me. If you visualize having to hold something under your arm in your armpit, if you, if you have to, just get you a paper towel or something and put it up under your arm and in your armpit right there and keep it uh, secure the whole skip. In other words, you should not get out in there. Uh, it helps Talking to a guy the other day, said he couldn't skip at all and that kind of thing. And if you'll do that to keep it, uh, I said just keep you. If you have a paper towel or something, put it up under your armpit right there and keep it 
intact the whole time throughout the whole cast. You know, and still bring your rod up and all that, but you, uh, uh, where, where people mess up, me included, if I, if my skipping goes bad, it's generally because I've gotten too, too loose in my upper body, and, uh, you know, you, once you get a consistent release on it, uh, then you can, uh, then you begin to get good at it. But, you know, if you're just a little bit off on your release and that kind of thing, you'll plunk it down in the water and have a big backlash and that type of thing. But if you get locked in there pretty secure, you'll uh, be a lot better off with it. Quit, I'll get you back in the water if you'll just knock it off. All right, guys, we've got a little old spotted bass there on the Coosa Red Eye jig. Uh, it's, uh, we'll hold it up here in a minute and get you to get a better look at it. I forget what it's a banana head, I think he calls it. Uh, jig and it's got the perfect weed guard like i said earlier it's an outstanding weed guard it's just, it's just enough uh for this target oriented fishing it's a three this is the three eighths ounce model uh, uh you saw the hook penetration there uh I mean, get get with derek at Coosa red eye he's got a, a facebook site uh, and uh you know, like I said, he, he'll work with you on colors. This is a color he and I had talked about. And he's, I think he happened to have some of these already. But uh, we'll take a little closer look at it when we get out of this pocket here. Wind's kind of blowing me around. I don't have spot lock. <laughs> if I stop and talk too much, it'll... Uh, uh, deal like I was talking about point. earlier. I'm sitting in a real good area for fish. Uh, and I'm trying to back off of them a little bit where I can back off everything where I can cover several different locations that they may be. They could be up there on the bank, uh, around the, the wood, chunk rocks on the out a little bit. And I'm actually sitting in a ditch right now that's about eight feet, so that could be the deal too. I just clipped a leg off my trailer. Hello? <laughs> Skylar, my youngest son, with me out here today. There he is back there. He's out here fishing with me and uh, see who can, who can catch the most and the biggest here. Found out a little earlier, my dad made a hole in one today playing golf. So congratulations to my dad and Skylar's granddad. He's been playing golf, I know, 50 years for sure. 
Probably longer than that, 60 years, and that's his first one. We're actually up here in the cove where they live. Special guest scholar there uh, just scored one. Uh, it's pretty good area right here. See where that <clears throat> chunk rock <clears throat> transitions into that little rock right there? That's a pretty good spot. Fish are a lot like deer. They Anything that'll make an edge, they like to be around it. Or you ain't gonna catch them out here just in this flat part here, unless you got a brush pile or something out there, which as you know, we keep brush piles all down through here. Yeah, you're a little better worm fisherman than you thought. That's exactly how you catch them on a worm. Especially while you got that in rigged. You just you feel a bite real when then when you feel jerk but he'll reel up some before a fish was a predator he was prey i think that's hardwired in them to get away from not being to not be eat you know <laughs> even though he might weigh seven pounds now ain't nothing in this river gonna eat him but he's still hardwired that way See what happened yesterday, I was uh, fishing off the dock and uh, I was crappie fishing, had my crappie jig tied on and a little old brim ate it. And I was fooling with him. I was actually trying to, hoping he'd get off before I didn't have to get up and handle him, you know. I was letting him tangle around there and there was a catfish came up after that brim. I bet you it weighed 25 pounds, 30. He, he didn't get it, but he was, he, I reckon he may have saw me or something. He came up in a hurry. I guess he's living on that dock. I don't know. There's some big old shad back in here. Right now. Me and Dylan were fixing them a cast. Really? Yeah. Big. Not like what we used to have. You know, not them. Yeah. These were like length of my hand. Too. Yeah, you learn something valuable about worm fishing that most people mess up when you stumble into that bite. Most people, when, you, when you're fishing slow like this, just bouncing stuff along the bottom and doing things slow, most people will jerk right when they feel a bite. A lot of times they'll just have that thing by the tail on that first, first feel, then they'll suck it in again, you know? The longer you can, the longer you can wait before you set the hook, the better off you are. I'm not very patient. I'm one of those people that mess that up all along. Lay the hammer down on them. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they'll thump and I'll jerk right back. Be careful. It's funny how you got bit a while ago and I just have come through there. It always amazes me when I fish in the back of the boat. Fish back there all day and think, I ain't ever gonna get a bite with fishing behind somebody, you know. I always try to fish something a little different. You got to fish something that fishes the same pace, you know, but not hardly the same thing. Problem with all these shad fishing around when these shad start migrating and bring the food chain in with them. Conventional wisdom said throw something that like a shad. But when there's 10,000 shads, it's hard to get them to pick your shad out. <laughs> yeah. I don't ever try to match the shad there. I'll try, I like to be where they're at. Need something to you yeah, something that they're used to eating on. And... Ha! Ah. Look out. The world's that thing. Like a bumper off a car. Do it. 
Looks like a bumper off a car. Oh, yeah. No fish around it. Car bumper pattern. <laughs> hard to repeat it. Because I'm convinced that like the fall migration when the shad come in here the the food chain comes with them but I don't I think it happens over time I don't think they look at each other so, all right boys let's go I'm roll. yeah I think it is start trickling back into these pockets of course there's fish that live their whole life in these kind of pockets like that fish you caught a while ago in y'all's pocket over there she's probably a resident fish Probably born right there. Brush piles like that don't bring in fish. But when they come in, it's to keep them from leaving. Man, they got no way of knowing out there in that river that, hey, there's a bunch of good brush now over here. Yeah. Oh, Johnny told me about the <laughs> when they do come in there you know you get them to stay moving baits in general a low light bait you gotta have something to break up the light be it clouds obviously you know that kind of thing or get out with the winds blowing on breaking up the surface see how calm this surface right here is that lets a lot of light in fish generally don't chase moving baits with that much light Uh, it just sticks out, you know, and it's a bunch of flat, and then all of a sudden there's that one thing sticking out. For a fish in this area, he should want to get up in there. Like I said, you're not going to find fish. Just think of it in terms of deer hunting, you know, other than when the light gets real low, are they going to come out in a green field? They ain't going to be out just milling around out there. They're going to be up in the woods or the trails or on an edge or something. Name for what? Yeah. Yeah. Really? They hunt like Atlanta and stuff like that. Yeah. It's really cool. They kill like massive bears. I guess because, you know, people don't really hunt up in those areas. Like they came to Birmingham and killed a deer that was almost in Alabama State Records. Gosh, dog it. That'll draw them in right there. Yeah. yeah, that's always good for fishing. Yeah, old, old jig fish here. Huh? All right. A little, little bit of feedback there, if nothing else. Uh, it wasn't all that great, but uh, like I said, it was, uh, it was some feedback. It kind of holds with what we've been catching. Uh, which is uh, fooling around with, you know, some hardcover, some rocks, some brush piles, stuff like that. So, uh, I had to let Skyler out of the boat. He, he is a student, so he had to go be a student. Now, I had to get my sleeves off, so. Anyway, we're back out here at it. Glad to have Skylar out on the boat with me for a little while. He's 22 years old. So he's 
college student, so anytime you get a chance to spend time with your 22-year-old son or daughter or whatever out on the water, you better take it. And they can get awful busy as they get older. That's a good lesson for uh, all you parents out there. So the kids, the older they get, the busier they get. I'm sure my parents tell you the same thing. I'm really enjoying this Coosa Red Eye Jig, although that last fish did not come off of that. That was a Strike King skipping jig. That's a pretty good tee up right there. When you jig fishing around these rocks, uh, especially, you know, active fish. And uh, when that uh, jig hits, give it a little swim there. Just put you, I put my thumb on the spool and drag it for about anywhere from six inches to a foot and give it a little action. And one, it'll help you, you might draw a reaction bite out of the deal. Two, it'll keep it from going, wedging directly down into a rock seam there. Ah. I shouldn't complain, it's a good, good to have a bite. Hoping it'd be a big one. A little spotted bass. Yeah, uh, shouldn't have. Sorry about complaining about a bite. <laughs> that was exactly what we just talked about right there. I swam that thing a little bit and uh, got it to come on over the first run of rocks. And I'm letting it come off the, it seemed like the fish are sitting out in the ditch here. They're not up there in the rock, but my boat's in six feet. Those fish are uh, sitting at the, where the ditch meets the, the rock right there on the drop. So when that jig, jig comes dropping off of that thing, they'll pounce on it. We just, as it gets later in the day, uh, Ah, and bring them. Uh, as it gets later in the day, it, uh, fish will start moving out to the edges where they can ambush something and that kind of thing. So. Come back and got it. A little better fish right there. I guess that was a brim. Got him on that, uh, there's that Coosa Red Eye jig right there. Uh, so that's old Derek Coburn. Is good. He's figured something out right there. Now. That's a nice little old fish. Coming up on another transition area right here. Uh, goes from just a regular earth bank, dirt bank. I like to call it dirt bank when it's not. I mean, it's got grass and yard runs right down to it, but it comes down to a seawall right here that's got uh, cement cylinders as a backing. And how that cement cylinder deal wor works, they've got those things. Those things are going to come off about three feet out, four feet out from that seawall. I don't know if you can see those cylinders right there or not, but... Uh, They get there out here, way on out here, and they build them up with those things uh, to level the seawall. It's uh, a little sticky for your jig, but I'm telling you, it'll hold fish. This is uh, it's an outstanding place for a morning bite. If you like working seawalls, you know, with the top water in the morning. A little pop bars or walking bait stuff like that but uh you know the downside of it is what gets me doing what i'm doing with it it gets sticky now 
Good gosh. Gosh, dog, what a bass. What a bass. Never could catch up to him. Had me by the foot. My, my, my. That was a monster fish. Had that jig by the foot, look at there. About to get dark and close the book on a day that's been at it a long time a day, especially for me, but good to get back out here on the, on the water and bring you guys along. Fish a little bit around this beaver dam right here. Usually something, there he is right there. Playing around this beaver dam. Uh. We'll beat him. All right, guys. Uh, just got through from a, a long day of fishing for me, uh, not for some of you guys, but uh, I was out for about about seven hours total today, uh, which is unusual for me. I usually just fish a couple of three hours, but. Uh, Started out by myself, and as you will see on the video, I hope that uh, I got a I got a phone call from Skyler, my 22-year-old son. He wanted to get out and fish a little bit, so I uh, went back and picked him up, and he and I fished for a little bit. And uh, he caught one. I think I don't think I caught any while I was with him. I'm not sure, but uh, uh, and then uh, the day heated up, I had to had to change shirts there, and uh, I didn't change shirts. Just took off my long sleeve. Uh, sun shirt and uh, uh, fish the rest of the day in a t-shirt but uh, anyway uh, wasn't much going today uh, I'll be honest with you uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about jig we're talking about jig fishing and uh, uh, just about uh, you know fall transition and, and we wound up establishing a little bit on the rocks fishing hard covering rocks but uh, got had a fair amount of bites but just nothing nothing big uh, you know, big from where we were at at Neely was, you know, a good three pound fish is a good fish, but we never did, never did catch any of those. And uh, hopefully you saw on the video, I had one real good fish take a swipe at me over there and uh, uh, he just missed the, missed the jig. He had it and ran to my right with it and obviously just had it by the trailer. Uh, but I saw the whole thing. I don't know what you can see or can't see on the video, but uh, anyway, that was the deal. Uh, appreciate you guys coming along and uh, Hope you found something that you can use and find a little enjoyment with it. Thanks.